Morning everyone, Angus Campbell here and welcome to another session of garden tool maintenance. Or not. It's bath time. Right, I'm out in the garden because I've got some gravel here and uh, it means that um, being near the, the hose pipe we can get on and clean this lot up um, with some degreaser. Degreaser is also a uh, very good weed, weed colour. Uh, just a tip there, so that's why we're doing it here too. Um, so what I've got then are the, uh, the crankcases. I've got the head that I'd like to try and use with a couple of broken fins on the front if we can get those repaired. Um, I've also got here the sump and, and the gauze. See how they clean up. Um, I've removed one or two little bits and pieces like the oil pressure release frail from down here, but you can see within that cavity there that it is full of sludge that was behind the oil pressure relief valve. And you can imagine how that stuff has got into the sludge trap in the center of the crank and uh, probably completely blocked it. I've known uh, A65s uh, being rebuilt or ones that have let the left hand rod go where the uh, sludge trap in the center of the journals in the crank has been absolutely jam solid uh, with residue to the extent where you, you, you can't wash it out, you've got to drill it out or alternatively take the sludge trap out and replace it um, because it just gets packed down so tight obviously with the uh, uh, with the revolutions creating so much centrifugal force so you can imagine why this uh, this engine let go um, as one or two of you commented um, and I still think there's more evidence to support this I, I don't think this engine's done that many miles um, but they've probably been pretty hard miles, but it's just not been maintained. It's probably never had its oil changed. Um, and these engines do not have full flow oil filters like the Rocket 3 and the, uh, the 350 double overhead cams. They have full flow, uh, full flow paper elements. These don't, they just rely on gauzes. Um, obviously one in the sump there that we can see and another one in the bottom of the uh, spine, spine frame uh, near the feed from the uh, bottom of the spine frame, the oil feed at the bottom there uh, and that's all you have. Um, so you've just basically got to make sure you change the oil regularly and uh, God knows how long this had run with uh, minimal oil really. Um, there was also a huge amount of sludge in the uh, in the bottom of the spine frame when I took the plate off there before we got it uh, cleaned up and stove enamels. So uh, let's get cracking with cleaning these up so there's the before picture and uh, we'll see what they uh, look like with the after picture. Just give, give a bit of a close up. You can see all the black um, coating everywhere. And uh, on this one, let's just take that plate away. On the other side, I mean, look, it's just covered everywhere because it was leaking because as, as you know, we found that uh, there was no gasket on the primary case, but there was luckily still a bit of oil in it uh, because um, if the slipper tensioner shreds because it's dry, which it can do, then the chain can uh, jump and I've experienced that in my youth before I got to know these uh, engines. Right, I'll crack on and we'll bring you back when these are cleaned up. Okay everyone, spent a couple of hours uh, cleaning these up with uh, degreaser and water and then uh, with uh, soapy water as well and uh, they're coming up uh, pretty well uh, not quite there yet but uh, an absolute massive improvement so still got a bit to go in certain areas but the uh, the cases are going to clean up fine and uh, with respect to the damaged one, there it is, the groove, and you can see from this side now where it's punched it out slightly. But uh, excuse me, sniffing, but um, not too bad at all. Uh, engine plates and a few other bits and pieces, some plate and actually the gauze have cleaned up really well. The head is going to need. Uh, blasting I think aqua blasting or bead blasting uh, but the intention was just to give that a bit of a clean up um, before I then uh, obviously strip strip the valves out because we'll probably put new uh, 
new guides and valves in probably, to be honest. Check the spring lengths, etc. as well. But anyway, uh, moving on. Next thing to do is just to finish stripping the crank uh, and then we'll uh, make arrangements to get that sent off for repair. And at the same time, I'll talk to uh, a supplier in town uh, to see about the aluminium welding on, on that case there. Okay, uh, crank up on the uh, on the vice, and just going to undo those two uh, big end bolts there, and to remove the uh, the old rod and piston. I've clamped it with the rod because the rod's knackered, um, and also I've noticed as well uh, that there's chips out of that piston too. So I'm not quite sure what happened there, but uh, I'll show you that in a second. So there we are. Came off easy enough, and as we uh, expected. This uh, right-hand journal is uh, perfectly good, as well as that right-hand plane main bearing. The uh, big end bearings on this side are, are fine and not scored. In fact, hardly polished up, really. Um, so that's good news as well, because that basically confirms that um, it was getting oil on the right hand side and therefore the oil pump is probably okay. We are going to rebuild the oil pump to check that and in the <coughs> earlier engines um, in the earlier A65s they did have alloy bodied oil pumps which were known to distort and therefore uh, could compromise oil pressure but with these later motors it's a cast iron pump and uh, this basically confirms that actually uh, certainly the right hand side was getting getting pressure and it's uh, it's fine so that's uh, again pretty good news so uh, there we are um, oh yeah and uh, just to show you there's a huge great chip out of that but I'm, I would imagine that's from people messing about trying to uh, take this motor apart there's all sorts of uh, damage on that but I, I might have done some of that because obviously I was using this to uh, jam the crank when we were trying to get the camshaft uh, pinion bolt uh, nut off uh, but anyway um, we've got all new rods and pistons uh, the rods are the later ones with the cast iron cap well sorry steel cap rather than alley which is correct and uh, that concludes probably the uh, this phase of the A70 Lightning. So um, while we've got parts out uh, for repair, i.e. the left-hand crank case and, uh, and the crank, then we'll transfer our attention probably to the E35 SS motor build, all of which Is languishing in there so there is a part built motor in there which we want to continue and uh, when we left that um, we were trying to uh, sort out clearances within the gearbox and also uh, replacing bearings that were actually the one wrong way around uh, so we'll get on to that probably in a couple of weeks time after a, a little bit of a, a lull so that's it for now Thanks very much for, for watching everybody. Uh, so there we are, that's where the uh, A70 Lightning motor is. That's where the rest of the parts are down there, which we can begin to uh, refurbish. And there's the uh, rolling chassis over there. And we'll come back to this in a few weeks time. Thanks very much for watching everybody. Appreciate it. See you again soon.